From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A quick note here before we start, the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District has announced that in the name of safety, school is canceled tomorrow due to the snow. Also, crews are working to get power restored in areas where heavy snow has pulled down tree limbs into the power lines and police say treat intersections where signal lights are out as four-way stops. All right, and in other news, a week before the October 6th municipal election, three of the four borough mayoral candidates took part in a forum at today's Greater Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce General Membership Luncheon. Citing an extensive criminal history, the chamber uninvited candidate Corey Jackman to the forum. Carl Castle, Tammy Wilson, and Robert Shields made their pitches to the business community as to why they should be the borough's next top executive. When asked how the additional $10 million in tax revenue from the higher assessed value of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline should be used, Wilson said it should go back to property taxpayers. Castle said some should be set aside to prepare for less state revenue in the future, while Shields say the money should go towards small business and job training. In terms of increasing private sector jobs and encouraging business expansion in the borough, the three had differing views. Uh, next spring, we can start ordering solar panels, putting them on our schools. By the fall, we could have created new jobs, we could create a new revenue, and we would be well on our way towards energy independence and a thriving local economy. But we need to go and look at all the regulations that have just kept building and building and building and bringing those businesses in and, say, and asking them, what can we do better? The other part of that, though, is when a business closes, it's also going to that person and saying, why are you closing your business? I think we have to try to do our best to diversify uh, the economy, and we need to start by helping government get out of the way, whether it's permitting from the planning department uh, and zoning and getting paperwork through the borough. We need to be efficient. Yesterday marked the start of the 2015 Arctic Energy Summit. Many business leaders and energy conservation and regional experts are coming together throughout the week to discuss new energy ideas and findings. The summit remains at the Carlson Center through this Thursday. The Institute of the North, a nonprofit based in Anchorage, is hosting the event. Early yesterday, Scientific Minds attended a workshop about integrating traditional knowledge into oil and gas development. And UPIT Elder Charlie Hobson had some words of encouragement for the continued development of research buildings in Barrow, Alaska. He says Barrow has been inundated with North Slope scientists interested in energy production efforts. Arctic Slope Regional Corporation Director Richard Glenn agrees. He says hiring local experts for research in regional projects could help expedite new discoveries in the Arctic. Our traditional knowledge is like a consensus thing. Everybody doesn't have to agree, but everybody gets a chance to take a shot at the idea. And we usually boil it down to a few safe solutions. A Fairbanks man accused of the attempted murder of his wife was back in court this afternoon for day two of his sentencing hearing. Bradford Faircloth is facing multiple felonies after authorities say he brutally attacked his wife inside of their home. Now today, testimony centered on Faircloth's mental health history. A forensic psychologist testified that Faircloth suffered from severe combat-related PTSD. The victim of the assault also took to the stand to recount the brutal beating she suffered at the hands of Faircloth. Superior Court Judge Paul Lyle announced he would take the testimony under consideration and make a final decision on the amount of jail time, if any, he would impose on Friday. And when we come back, air quality is a hot subject these days, and tomorrow night a local environmental group will discuss it with the public. Also in our weekly health report, we'll discuss the precautions you should take when you send your children to school with allergy sensitivities. These stories and more when we come back. And welcome back. With the municipal election just a week away, candidates are reaching out to convince voters they're the right choice for a number of positions. Tonight, Mike Fussell takes a look at the race for Borough Assembly Seat F. Seat F of the Borough Assembly is expiring next month. Catherine Dodge, the incumbent who was the Finance Committee Chair, took office three years ago and is running again because she says her work is not yet finished. But the seat does have a challenger, Paul Doak, who moved here in 2006 from Savannah, Georgia. He says he feels he's become a part of the community and will focus his platform around taxes. We need to shrink the property tax down to a, a sustainable amount and increase other tax bases. Dodge says her experience is what sets her apart from other candidates. I 
and um, a specialist in economic development and small business development and small business support is what I do. So I look at the lens of how do we have a healthy economy, how do we have healthy business in our community. Doak, a small business owner in the entertainment industry, says his background will give him the tools to bring people together and make change. So I have a lot of experience in working with people in different groups and getting everybody to come together to finish a project all at the same time. In addition to economic development, Dodge says air quality will be a top priority if re-elected. I think we may need to ask the community to come talk to the assembly and say, we did this, we thought it was the right thing last year. Let's not, let's not do legislation and initiatives. Let's do it by listening and by talking and by asking questions. Voting booths will open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 o'clock at night next Tuesday, November 6th. Reporting, I'm Mike Fussell. Community members will be meeting up to discuss air quality tomorrow night at Raven's Landing. The Northern Alaska Environmental Center, a pro-environment group, will be hosting the public talk. A panel of air quality professionals from across the borough will deliver their thoughts on the subject and take questions from members of the audience. The event is set to kick off at 6.30 in the evening. It will focus on the causes, effects and solutions to the issue. Alaska Northern Environmental Center Air Quality Coordinator Kristen Hendricks says her organization hopes the event will prompt community members into action. It's going to be primarily education based so we want to um, ensure that people are aware of the problem and what causes the problem and then what they can do um, as individuals and as a community to solve um, the problem. Sending a child off to school can be one of the scariest things for parents of kids with life-threatening food allergies. Monty Bowen has some tips on dealing with the issue in this week's health report. There are some things you can do and teach your kids to do in order to make both the lunchroom and the classroom safe from food allergens. Encourage your child to keep their food to themselves. This is one important instance where sharing should be off limits. Don't trade with anyone, don't eat anything that's not packaged or safe because you never know if there's a possible allergen that can be life-threatening for them. Teach the teacher. It's important that everyone from the principal to the bus driver know about your child's food allergy and how your child has reacted to the allergens in the past. An epinephrine injector pen should be accessible and teachers should know how to use it if an allergic reaction occurs. Some classrooms may offer rewards for good behavior. It may even be a good idea to talk to the school about making those rewards non-food items. Try to encourage uh, that the schools try not to use treats as rewards. So, you know, if they go to parochial school, maybe a dress down day or, you know, a, a movie that they can watch instead of actually using food. If there is no getting around food-based classroom treats, Parents can ask to bring in an alternative treat for their child if allergies are a concern. This is Bonnie Bowen reporting. The Health Report is brought to you by the Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic, located in the Medical Dental Arts Building, and by Interior Women's Health, located on 1626 30th Avenue. All right, Joe Cook is up next with sports and has the week's Nana Corner. Also, there are recaps of high school regional championships from a busy weekend of local sports. That's right. Stay with us. Joe Cook is next. Welcome back into your Alaska. Joe Cook here with your local Tuesday sportscast. We'll have the Nanook Corner and more in a bit. But first, some game cancellations due to this weather. Tonight's flag football game between Hutchinson and Lathrop has been canceled. No makeup date has been set as of yet. What was supposed to be tonight's Aurora Conference volleyball game between Allison and Hutchinson has now been moved to October 1st. In today's Nanook Corner, we highlight this year's Nanook Hall of Fame induction class. Here's more. There were a number of UAF events on Saturday, but they started by honoring their own in the Nanak Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Kathy Cox played for UAF from 1986 to 1990 and is the leading scorer overall for women's and men's basketball with 2,097 points and is fourth all-time in rebounds. She was also an All-American as a freshman. I didn't know what a lot of my numbers were and, you know, I didn't really care. We wanted to win and I was in college and, you know, it was just, um, it was the time of life that you're just living in it and I'm just blessed that it came out so fantastic. 
Former men's basketball coach Al Semmingson led UAF's men's basketball team for 18 years and has the most wins with 245. The Nooks got their first postseason championship during his tenure. It all means a great deal to me. It also means a great deal to my, my family uh, because they've always been very, very supportive of whatever I've done. And uh, this award uh, meant a lot to them too, but it, it's a big deal to me. One of Sevington's players was inducted alongside him. Bart LeBon played just two years but averaged a double-double and was on UAF's two-time NAIA championship teams. He's also a prominent booster for the program. This is just one of those uh, special events that propels me for more, and I'm going to be active in any way I can to support uh, Nanook Athletics. Last but not least, former Nanook hockey coach Rick Schaefer was inducted. He guided the Nooks from Division II to Division I hockey, has four straight 21 seasons, and has the best winning percentage for a Nanook hockey coach. Well, this was uh, probably my most rewarding, fun experience that I had, starting a hockey program in Fairbanks, Alaska. And, and and I think that uh, added to that feeling is that it's going strong today. Nano Corner, brought to you by Sports Medicine Fairbanks. And before local cross country teams can compete for state championships, they had to run for region championships. Here's a look back at that regional meet. This past Saturday on a snowy North Star golf course, cross country runners had career days at the regional meet. The West Valley girls dominated the girls race, taking spots one through seven. Jenna DeFalco won her third straight region title with a time of 20 minutes, 39 seconds for the Wolfpack. I'm really proud of our team for sticking together. And I think there are some people that were not confident on like being able to stick with the pack, but they did and that's, that's awesome. For 3A, the Galena Hawks swept the team titles, but Hutchinson's Grace Moore repeats as region champion. Teammate Cora Farrell finished second as well. It's great that we're moving up there in the ranks that we had two top two. That's I think that's just the best thing, that we work as a team and work our way up there. In the boys race, Caleb Corda of Galena finished his career with four region titles, two in region two and two in region six. He won the boys race overall by 16 seconds. I never really thought about it until you asked me now. Never really thought about region titles or state titles. Just uh, treating every race no different than another. It's just a race. In 4A, the Lather boys won by three points over West Valley to pull somewhat of an upset over the Wolfpack. But Ty Donaldson won the boys race and thinks the Wolfpack are in position for a state title. Yeah, we're definitely looking at state. That's what we've been looking at this whole year past two years actually. So, yeah, we've definitely got some high hopes for state. <laughs> And wrap things up with a look back at the region championships in high school tennis. One player has one last championship to earn. Here's more. This year's regional tennis championships were at the Alaska Club, and the final match of the night on Saturday was in boys' doubles. Lathrop Sam Greenberg and Jake Roselius battled West Valley's Brandon Van Landingham and Brian Ely. After a split in the first two sets, it went to a tiebreaker. Greenberg toughed it out, playing on an injured foot. It was 6-6 before Van Landingham and Ely finally got separation. They won the tiebreak 10-7 for their first doubles title. It was redemption for the duo. It's surreal. After not even making it to the championship last year, and just here we are now we're going to state you know the first set it was tough we just really beat ourselves once we slowed down and just hit the ball like we knew how to hit it we got it we knew how to play a lot of it was just like in our heads we had to overcome our mental game to get to our physical game and I think we started to shape up and do that towards the end and I think we brought it together to get our victory West Valley won the team title after going 8-0 and in the regular season Wolfpack senior Jared Lees also finished his Mac career undefeated but there's one thing he hasn't done yet win a state title it's kind of like the one last big uh, hoorah, I guess you'd say. So um, just excitement, and I don't think I'm nervous, just excited. So I'm looking forward to it, and uh, hopefully I can get the W. The things that I'll remember is being with the team and uh, making memories with them. So it's been, it's been really fun. And for more on those stories, visit WebCenter11.com. That's it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz will let us know how much more snow we can expect, and that's coming up after the break. Hey everyone, welcome back into our Tuesday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz with you once again talking about the weather and what a day it has been. And it continues to be a really wild evening. We're looking at uh, winds actually blowing out there. And of course, we've had our heavy snow anywhere from uh, probably around 9 to 11 inches so far is the uh, reporting. And we're looking for maybe a few more inches before it all stops. The good news is I just checked the latest radar and satellite. It looks like it is just about moving out of our area. So a couple more hours of this, and then we'll just be drifting off into snow shower activity. More about that in just a little bit. Our photograph tonight taken by Jeannie Brooks, 
And this was taken last week when we had our other front moving in. Look how perfectly lined those clouds are right across the horizon there. Really nice shot there, drive through to the clouds. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, be sure and send it to photos at ktbf11.com. Your numbers, today's high freezing, 32 degrees. The low last night, the exact same temperature. The record high, 68 in 1942. The record low, 12 in 1992. And your sunrise and sunset, 11 hours and 32 minutes, a loss of six minutes from yesterday. The winter storm warning is continuing through 6 a.m. tomorrow, just to be safe. Another three to six inches is possible in the higher elevations. Expect low visibility and difficult travel, uh, travel conditions. And the biggest news is schools will be closed tomorrow because of poor driving conditions. So keep that in mind. Here's what's going on on the latest radars. You can see moving in across the Fairbanks area. Look at all this snow still moving across the area. But you'll also notice down to the south here, it's starting to break up a little bit, which means that the, uh, the worst is moving through us now as we speak. The long range shot showing that area of low pressure moving right across the bottom of the trough and then moving up into the Prince William Sound area. That's helping to pivot all that moisture across us. And it looks like that is starting to weaken. And as that does weaken, that'll be making a lot less opportunity for more moisture to come in across the area. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. What else is going on across the rest of the state? Well, there's been raining like crazy over southeast Alaska. Flooding problems there. The good news is the rains are slowly coming to an end there. Across the Anchorage Bowl, they're getting ready for more rain and mixed rain and snow. Kodiak 37, sunny uh, along the Aleutian Chain 45 at Cold Bay. And then cooler temperatures as you move up the west coast to Nome 36, 34 at Barrow and Fort Yukon cloudy in 32. Lower 48 weather looks like this. And again, a nice day over the Pacific Northwest, 71 in Seattle. Still 100 degree temperatures over the southwest. Not too bad in Denver, 78. A little, once again, a little cooler somewhat than it was yesterday in Dallas, but not by much. In Minneapolis, at 63 degrees. Very cool there. Over the eastern half of the country, lots of rain to talk about. Look at all this moisture moving across the um, the northeast bringing just incredible amounts of rainfall and it looks like this for tomorrow as you can see this week uh, the rainfall could total as high as 10 inches in some areas with all that moisture coming in and more expected over the weekend with a new tropical system in the Atlantic Ocean. So the jet stream once again doing some wild things, all different dips and doodles here. Wherever you see a bottoming out is where they're going to get the most weather and that's what's happening uh, right now as we speak. Okay, time once again for our kids weather and this week we're going to be visiting with the kids from Barnett Magnet School. And tonight here's a young man with a cool story. We were cooking dinner and we were just hanging out and it was really windy outside, and it knocked down, a, I think, a dead limb onto the power line, and it sent out a really long power outage. And so our dinner couldn't cook inside the oven, so we had to put it in the wood oven. And it took a really long time, but finally it came, uh, the power outage was over, and we got to eat our dinner, and that's my story. Well, Destin, we can identify with that uh, story because of all the power outages going on today and continuing into this evening. Again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather. Tomorrow night, a young lady will be here to share her picture on the wind. All right, here's what's going on as far as, far as our forecast across uh, Alaska. Well, if we just go to our forecast locally and see that we're looking at tonight, uh, once again, more periods of snow right on through the evening with about uh, three to six inches additional accumulation expected. And tomorrow, cloudy skies with snow slowly tapering off about one to two inches expected there. And the five day outlook, as you can see here, temperatures once again starting to warm up a little bit for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But still a little mix of rain and snow is possible for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And again, overnight lows will once again be cooling down. That's what we're looking at uh, to be really worried about is the cold temperatures tonight and tomorrow night with all of the uh, moisture and the snow that we have. It's, nope. it's not good out there right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And I, a lot of trees coming down today. Our scanner was going crazy today with trees falling left and right. Well, the mm -hmm. one thing that the police do want us to stress to our viewers and to everybody is to make sure to treat the traffic stops as four ways because mm -hmm. a lot of power outages are being reported. Yep. And just make sure to put your headlights on because yep. that is one of the biggest complaints that drivers My have My wife saying. told me that all the stoplights are out, so you got to just mm -hmm. be courteous and... Take your turn. That's Go what very, it is. Yes, just take it yeah. easy because you might not think it's slippery because it's just snow, but it's yeah. pretty slick under 
that now almost, what, a foot of snow? Yeah, and they canceled school for a good reason because the, the roads are really going to be really tough, uh, especially mm -hmm. for the school buses. Yep. So they figured they'd be, just be air on the side of caution. Absolutely. Yeah. Just drive I mean, slow, October. take it easy. Yeah. 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 Not even October. You're right, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the United States launched an airstrike today against the Taliban to retake the city of Kunduz. That's up next with Lester Holt. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webster11.com. All right, from all of us here at the News Center, stay safe and have a good night.